American eugenicists and Nazis. As we have seen, American eugenicists were very impressed with their German counterparts and wanted to keep in touch with them and publicize the progress they were making in eugenic research and politics. In fact, as early as 1923, Davenport and Laughlin had renamed Eugenical News, adding the subtitle, Current Record of Racial Hygiene, thus incorporating the German term, Race Hygiene. This emphasized the racial component of the eugenics movement. At this time, the journal regularly began to highlight articles from German journals, as did other eugenics-oriented journals, such as the Journal of Heredity. Coverage of German publications was not limited to the eugenic press. JAMA employed a German correspondent who regularly reported on German eugenicists' medical research. The anti-Semitic slant of Nazi science began to become commonplace in these American journals. By 1931-1932, Hitler's calls for fascist repression, territorial expansion, and persecution of non-Aryan, replacing the traditional term Nordic, races, were prominent in newspapers and were being heard on American radio and in newsreels. This did not diminish American eugenicists' support of their German counterparts. Just before Hitler's takeover, E.N. carried a long article praising his eugenic views and pointing out how he had been guided by American eugenicists Lothrop Stoddard and Madison Grant. It stated that when they, Hitler and the Nazis, take over the government in Germany, in a short time there may be expected new race hygienic laws and a conscious Nordic culture and foreign policy. As Nazi policies of racial repression and ethnic cleansing intensified, news of their atrocities was not kept secret. They were chronicled daily on the pages of America's newspapers, by wire services, radio broadcasts, weekly newsreels, and national magazines. Germany bragged about its anti-Jewish measures and eugenic accomplishments. Simultaneously, American eugenicists kept day-to-day -day tabs on the Nazi eugenic program. Much of the world was beginning to understand the atrocities the Nazis were committing and was repulsed by them. Most of the world's media was now focusing on the inhumane aspects of Hitler's regime. As Germany passed its mandatory sterilization laws in 1933, American eugenics journals and other publications continued to cover Nazi policies with pride and excitement. EN, JAMA, Birth Control Review, and American Journal of Public Health all contained articles praising the new laws and other Third Reich policies and racist research. Black describes the mid-1930s. With each passing day, the world was flooded with more Jewish refugees, more noisy anti-Nazi boycotts and protest marches against any scientific or commercial exchanges with Germany, more public demands to isolate the Reich, and more shocking headlines of Nazi atrocities and anti-Jewish legislation. Still, none of this gave pause to America's eugenicists. Correspondence on joint research flowed freely across the Atlantic. American eugenicists and their many organizations and committees maintained and multiplied their contacts. Eager and cooperative letters, reports, telegrams, and memoranda did not number in the hundreds, but in the thousands of pages per month. Things began to change only after the negative publicity surrounding the Nuremberg Laws began to spread in 1935. It was an attempt to counter negative publicity in the United States that stimulated German authorities to publicly recognize Harry Laughlin's contribution to Nazi policy by conferring him an honorary degree. In fact, the awarding of many honorary degrees to U.S. recipients at universities was politically motivated. Even after the Nuremberg Laws were passed, Laughlin and Davenport continued to publish regularly in German journals. From 1936 to 1939, Nazi Germany began attempting to appropriate territory from its European neighbors and preparing for war. 
News of gruesome treatment of Eastern Europeans in concentration camps began to appear in world media, and refugees began to flood the world. American eugenicists soon began to distance themselves from Nazi policies. Genuine revulsion with Nazified eugenics was beginning to sweep over the ranks of previously staunch hereditarians who could no longer identify with a movement so intertwined with the race policies of the Third Reich. Longtime eugenicists and geneticists spoke of a resolution to dissociate eugenics from issues of race. In 1936, Journals such as JAMA finally began to criticize Nazi medical policies and research, and American funding of the Nazis began to dissipate. However, die-hard American eugenicists continued to admire Hitler's regime and defend his policies. In late 1935, ERA President Clarence Campbell attended the World Population Congress in Berlin and stated that Hitler and the German nation sets a pattern which other nations and other racial groups must follow if they do not wish to fall behind in their racial quality, in their racial accomplishments, and in their prospects for survival. Campbell, Laughlin, and Raymond Pearl all served as vice presidents at that Congress. Charles M. Goethe, the California eugenicist and successor to Campbell as ERA president, was able to tour Germany in 1935 and was thrilled by their program. In his presidential address to the ERA in 1936, Goethe pointed out how Germany in only two years had outpaced even California in its sterilization operations. During that same year, eugenicist Marie Kopp toured Nazi Germany and witnessed its heredity courts. She wrote articles throughout that year praising the fairness of the Nazi program. In 1936, the Nazi regime held a major propaganda extravaganza at the 550th anniversary of Heidelberg University. This was the occasion at which Laughlin was to receive his honorary degree. Although the New York Times called for American scholars to boycott the event, and many educators from Europe refused to attend, Representatives from Yale, Cornell, Columbia, Vassar, Johns Hopkins, Michigan, and Harvard were there. During the same year, Madison Grant's brother, DeForest, spent two weeks in Germany, and W.A. Plecker delivered a paper in Germany on Virginia's miscegenation laws and their success in halting the spread of the mongrel races. His ticket was paid for by Prescott Bush, father of the 42nd president of the United States and grandfather of the 44th. In 1937, Hermann Goering was commander-in-chief of the Luftwaffe, president of the Reichstag, prime minister of Prussia, and Hitler's designated successor. He was also, like Madison Grant, a conservationist and hunter, and Reich master of the hunt in